Hey guys, we're actually going to get started with our geometric sequences at the bottom of our notes here. Normally, if we were in class together, we'd start with a little bit of warm-up. We're actually going to use that warm-up kind of as our first example. So, uh, let's talk about what a geometric sequence is. A geometric sequence, let's give you the math definition here, is a sequence in the form A a times R, A times R times R, A times R times R times R, or to the second or to the third power, dot, dot, dot. Where A is the first term, and R is what we call the common ratio. It's going to be a very important term for geometric sequences. Okay, And what this means is the common ratio is basically the multiplier. It's what each term, what each subsequent term is being multiplied to obtain. Okay. So when we talked about arithmetic sequences, we talked about how from one term to the next, there was a constant that was being added. We called that the common difference. Um, in geometric sequences, you're going to see that from one term to the next, there's going to be a constant, but instead of being added, it's going to be multiplied. And that's what's called our common ratio. Okay? Um, so you'll see some kind of uh, exponential type uh, things in this unit, just like uh, the unit we just came out of. So our bacterial growth model, uh, the um, A equals P times B uh, to the X over N power, or to the t over n power, um, you know, that, that's exponential growth. If we looked at each, uh, if we took like a time of one hour and two hours and three hours and four hours, you would see, you would end up seeing a geometric sequence, and that should make a lot of sense, okay? Um, so, the explicit formula for the nth term of, an, of a geometric sequence is the first term, times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay? And it makes a lot of sense because if we have the first term, when we start multiplying to get future terms, this n minus 1 very simply means how many times are we multiplying it. Okay? So if we plug in the first term, the n would go, the 1 would go there, 1 minus 1 is 0, r to the 0 power goes away, which is why we would just be left with the first term. So that makes a lot of sense. If it was the second term, we'd plug a 2 in there, and we'd basically be multiplying this term by r once. The third term, we'd be multiplying the first term by r twice, and so on and so forth. And then the recursive formula for a geometric sequence, very simple. We're just multiplying each preceding term by r. So the nth term would equal the term before it times the common ratio. All right. Uh, let's go up here. And so basically the things we're going to be needing to identify is the common ratio, the first term, um, things like that. All right, let's go back up to our warm-up and use it as a little bit of an example. Given the sequence 8, 4, 2, 1, find the following. The explicit definition, well, is it geometric? I think the first thing you guys should be thinking of when you're looking at a sequence, once we wrap up this chapter, is, is the sequence arithmetic? Is it geometric, or is it neither of those two? So then we revert back to chapter of that first section where we're kind of trying to find the pattern, okay? Uh, this is geometric. What is, okay, so yes, all right? Now, what is the common ratio? These questions go hand in hand, okay? The common ratio would be the constant that we're multiplying each preceding term by to get the following term. From 8 to 4, I'd be multiplying by one half. Same with four to two, same with two to one. The common ratio is one half. That's really how I know that this is a geometric sequence. There is a common ratio. Okay. Now, let's take our explicit formula from below. All right, that's obviously given to you on any assessments. We're going to allow you to use those formulas. So, if this is our formula to find, the nth term of a geometric sequence, then we know what the first term is. The first term of the sequence is 8. The common ratio we found to be 1 half to the n minus 1 power. This 
would be our answer. If you want to test it, go ahead. Plug in a 1 for n, a 2 for n, a 3 for n, a 4 for n, you should end up, should end up with these first four terms. We're not going to do that, but you can trust me that that would happen. Recursively, we would say that the nth term is the term before it times the common ratio. But we'd also need to say that the first term happens to be 8. All right. Cool. Let's move along. All right. Find the first five terms of the geometric sequence, sequence where A is 3 and R is 2. So this is our first term. Okay. So our first term is 3. Our common ratio is 2. I don't really think we need to create a big formula for this, to be completely honest with you. If our ratio is 2, we're just going to continually multiply by 2. So the second term is 6, the third term 12, the fourth term 24, and the fifth term would be 48. Now if we were asked for the you know, 31st term here, we might want to create the formula uh, and then plug in a 32 for n, but we weren't asked for that. All right. Uh, first term of 1, common ratio of negative 1 over 3. Okay, so we'll see what happens when that ratio is negative. Okay, all right, so uh, first five terms. So we're going to, the first term is 1, and we're going to multiply each subsequent term by negative 1 third. Well, 1 times negative 1 third is negative 1 third. Negative 1 third times negative 1 third is positive 1 ninth. And then negative 1 over 27 and then positive 1 over 81. Basically, the denominator is growing by a factor of 3. The numerator is not growing at all, but you can see that these signs will alternate. We've talked about that. Um, all right, example 2. Find the eighth term of the geometric sequence, 5, 15, 45. Uh, is it geometric? Is it arithmetic? Is it neither? Well, I multiply by 3. I multiply by 3. This is geometric, and it was told to us with a common ratio of 3. Let's build the explicit formula just so we don't have to go like first term, second term, third term, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then get to the eighth. The nth term of a geometric sequence from the formula on the previous page, first term times common ratio to the n minus 1 power. If we're looking for the eighth term, well then the eighth term is 5 times 3 to the 8 minus 1 power, or 5 times 3 to the seventh power. And I'm going to use my calculator here real quick. 5 times 3 to the 7th power, 10,935 would be the 8th term. All right, let's move along to example 3. Now remember, if I go kind of quickly here, you can always rewind. That's the best part of kind of learning through videos. The third term of a geometric sequence is 12. The sixth term is 96. Find the 11th term. All right, so here we go. So the first term, the second term, the third term, the sixth term, the fourth term, the fifth term. We don't know some of these, but we do know two of them, 12 and 96. Okay, now we know that between the third and the sixth term, we're going to multiply three times. We don't know what the common ratio is just yet, but we know we're going to multiply three times. Okay, All right. so let's call this n. Okay, let's call that n. So from 96, from 12 to 96, 96 minus 12 is 84. Alright, how many times am I multiplying n? I'm multiplying n three times, and I need to go uh, get from 12 to 84 somehow. Or sorry, 12 to 96 somehow. It's got to cover 84. So how do we do that? How do we figure that out? What do you guys think? Multiply by 2? Are we multiplying by 3? Are we multiplying by 4? How might that happen to work here? Or is this not the way we want to think about it? Is that not the way we want to think about it? Well, I have 12 here, and I have a 96. Maybe that's kind of how we thought about the arithmetic sequence. So maybe that's not what we want to do here. Maybe you want to say 12 times 
n to the third is going to equal 96. Maybe that's how we want to think about it. Okay, because we have 12. Okay, this happens to be 6 minus 3. Right, the sixth there. There's three terms between 90, the sixth and the third term. So we're going to multiply three times. We're multiplying the same thing three times. That's the the number to the third power. All right. So 12 is kind of our initial term, and I'm multiplying the same number three times, and I should end up with 96. Well, let's just solve for n then. N to the third equals eight. We take the cube root of both sides, and we find that our n value, probably the wrong. Um, <laughs> probably the wrong letter to use to be completely honest. We probably should be using R here. R, R, because we're going to find the common ratio as long as we do it right. We'll get R equals 2. Okay. It says find the 11th term. Well, let's find the first term and create our um, create our explicit formula here. Or we can just multiply by 2 a few times. Um, you know, we could do that. But if we're working backwards and the common ratio is 2, well then I'll divide by 2 and divide by 2. So we have a 6 and a 3. So the nth term would be the first term, 3, times the common ratio of 2 to the n minus 1 power. If I wanted to find the 11th term, just plug in 11 for n. So I get 3 times 2 to the 10th. I'm not going to pretend to know what 2 to the 10th is off the top of my head. could take a guess at it. But... I'll use my calculator, and the 11th term would be 3,072. If you want to check your work, you can start at 96, multiply until you get to the 11th term, and hopefully we'd come up with the same thing. And uh, we will continue on with our partial sums uh, in the second part of this video.